What's up, everybody? Welcome into First Take. We are in rare form today. I think everybody's just sleep deprived at this point. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam, gentlemen, how are we? What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? Good. I would like to publicly thank my friend LeBron James for not <laughs> showing up down the stretch of that last game in Toronto, game four, which forced my friend Stephen A. Smith to go back to Cleveland where he sits right now, and he's also destined to have to go back to Toronto. I don't have any problem with coming to Cleveland. I understand that part. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if I'll forgive the Cavs for forcing me to have to go across the border and to have to go through. Because Toronto is a uh, sensational okay. city. But getting through customs yeah. and hmm. back, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm going to hold this against the Cavaliers for a long time. Yeah. I really am. I'm Stephen not A. Lie. Smith, though, should have PSA pre-check through customs. You know, like... Well, well, they just they just pass you through, right? They, they don't they don't they don't appear to do that <laughs> in Canada. But give me some time, I will make sure to ingratiate myself with the okay. citizens of Toronto, yeah. Canada. I'll, I'll see to that. Just chant, "We the North." They'll let you through. <laughs> That's true. All right, let's get into it, guys. So the Western Conference Finals taking a turn that none of us expected. The Warriors lost back-to-back -back games for the first time this season as the Thunder dominated them in Game Four, and the champs. On the brink of elimination, not the brink of the brink like yesterday. They are on the brink. Stephen A., what turned this series around? <sighs> to be quite honest with you, Billy Donovan um, and, and, and Russell Westbrook. When I think about Billy Donovan, I think about the fact that this is a man that is, is in his rookie year as a head coach, obviously being incredibly assisted by the great Mo Cheeks uh, as his lead assistant coach. But I'm looking at Billy Donovan. I'm looking at him making the adjustments to the Steven Adams and the Enos Cantor, whether it be against San Antonio uh, um, and now Golden State. I'm thinking about how LaMarcus Aldridge for San Antonio was averaging 40 in the first two games and then basically disappeared from then on because uh, uh, Billy Donovan instructed boys to get a bit physical with them and we found out uh, that as skilled as LaMarcus Aldridge is, uh, he can be a bit soft from time to time. I'm being nice this morning. And then we go to Gold KC and then you, you've got, you're going up against Golden State and here you are with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and the crew you lose game one. I'm sorry, you win game one. You come back and obviously struggle in game two, but in game one, you really go at them. And you got the Adams and the Cantors of the world in the game with a Bakker, and they're doing their thing. And then they make adjustments. And what do you do? You come back in game three. You go small with a Baca at the five. And all of a sudden, you're running them out the building. So you're showing the ability to make these adjustments. We get so accustomed to seeing NBA coaches just do their thing and say, hey, this is the way it's done in this league. Well, Billy Donovan is saying, no, it's a new day. It's a new era. And coaching is about making adjustments on the fly, not about just coming in with a game plan and sticking to it no matter what. You've got to make the adjustments. So I got to give Billy Donovan a boatload of credit and Sam Presti because right now it looks like a great hire. I'm seeing him do things that I just didn't see Scott Brooks doing. And I like Scott Brooks and he's a damn good coach. But I didn't see him doing some of these things when he was the head coach for the Oklahoma City Thunder. So Billy Donovan deserves a lot of credit. But Russell Westbrook, and I'm going to bring this name up, Skip Bayless. I'm going to ask a rhetorical or somewhat rhetorical question yet again to you. Who has craved a matchup between Russell Westbrook and Steph Curry more than me? I've been talking about it all year long. I was so looking forward to that Super Bowl Eve encounter on February 6th in Golden State. I've talked religiously and repeatedly about Russell Westbrook going up against him. And even when Russell Westbrook shot 35% from the field in three losses to Golden State during the regular season, I told y'all, this brother is coming. He's not the kind of guy that's just going to sit idly by, watch the world rave and sing about Steph Curry and shower him with all of these laudables and all of this praise. And Russell Westbrook is just going to sit by and let him do what he wants to do. I have never, ever seen Steph Curry attacked by a player the way Russell Westbrook has been attacking him. Steph Curry, I mean, this guy, you can see Russell Westbrook drooling at the mouth at the opportunity to go at Steph Curry. And to be quite honest with you, He's pretty much annihilating him. I mean, it, it's just the truth. The Steph Curry is deserving of being the two-time league MVP. He is absolutely big time. But with the exception of one quarter 
in this series. Skip, I can make a legitimate argument that, that Russell Westbrook has completely outplayed the two-time reigning league MVP. And in the process, he's humbling him and the Golden State Warriors. They have to respond. I told you it was cold red yesterday. You know it's damn sure cold red right now. Kevin Durant had a relatively subpar game. Robinson came off the bench with 17 critical points and did his thing. We see what Abak is doing with his own 17 points. A couple of blocks to go along with his seven rebounds as well. And Steven Adams' physical presence is imposing. They're physical, they're long, and they're beating up the Golden State Warriors, out-rebounding them, outscoring them with points in the paint, etc. But the real key here is that there's a superstar in Kevin Durant who's really shining, no matter what his shooting percentage is, from game to game, but he is supported by the most ruthless, vicious competitor in the game today who plays opponents like he hates them. And if he does that with normal dudes, can you imagine what he feels about Steph Curry? Strictly in basketball parlance, of course. Russell Westbrook is putting the world on notice. Steph who? Did y'all forget who the hell I am? And that is what is going on here. And as a result, Oklahoma City is up 3-1. And Skip, I'm here to tell you, I believe they're not just going to show up in Game 5. They're going to do everything they can to avoid Game 6 and try to close them out tomorrow night. I'm just telling you right now, these boys look ruthless and vicious. It's the team that I envisioned when I picked them to come out of the West before the season began and obviously before I lost faith in them when they lost 15 fourth quarter leads during the regular season. I must say I agree with every point you just made. And to your point, you have been the Don King hyping Steph versus Russ. Steph versus Russ. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Although I don't think you expected that Russ would annihilate Steph I consistently. Did, I did not expect Who that. Else? I did not. Who did? I did not. I did okay. not. And another I quick not. point before I launch. You know, you, you keep making the point about Stephen Adams. This has been, these whole playoffs have been a coming out party for Stephen Adams to the point that it just occurred to me as you were speaking, I just might have to start calling Stephen Adams Stephen A. Because he's been that good. <laughs> he's been good enough to be called Stephen A, right? Yeah. You, you know what? He has. You know what? He has. I kind of yeah. like that. He has. I kind of like that. Stephen A. I kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, but, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can't. I don't want him having my name I know, I know. after the comment it's he made funny. the other day about that. I, I can't I have that. Stevie Thank you. I forgive him. I forgive him, but I can't Stevie have that. A. He's only 22, so yeah. he's like a Stevie. Yeah. Okay? He's a Stevie A. give you that. All right. Now, back to all your points. Would you please allow me to put this in some context and perspective? Can Lord I yours. remind our viewers just how shocking what you're seeing actually is? Can I remind everyone that Golden State, mostly because of Steph Curry, beat Oklahoma City all three times in the regular season because Steph just took over down the stretch of all three games? And may I remind everyone out there in viewer land that Golden State has been favored by the Las Vegas odds makers, the Sharps, the smart guys in Vegas. They've been favored to win all four of these games. All four. The first one by seven and a half at Golden State, second one by nine at Golden State, by two and a half in the first game at Oklahoma City, and last night, Golden State was still favored to win by two points. Think about that. This has been a nightly upset, quote unquote, except that the tables have now swung. They've, they've turned so completely and so convincingly that all of a sudden Oklahoma City looks like, dare I say, a, a dominating to the point of unbeatable underdog. They've been an underdog in all four games, and they look like they can't be beaten. They have imposed their will completely on the defending champs who won a record 73 games. Let that sink in. They have completely imposed their will. Golden State has looked overmatched to the point of being overwhelmed. They have no answers for what has happened in Oklahoma City. And to me, the biggest picture takeaway here is that 
right before your very eyes, and certainly when I least expected it, the Oklahoma City Thunder grew up. They matured into their massive talent right before your very eyes. They arrived right on schedule, and suddenly they've arrived so co completely and convincingly, they look like they should be the favorites now to win it all, to win the title. And Stephen A., the shocker to me is, obviously, they blew 14 fourth quarter leads going into the fourth quarter during the regular season, one against Dallas in the playoffs. This team finally figured out how to take a punch, maybe in the third quarter or maybe in the fourth quarter. They took some last night. They took one from Clay in the third quarter, and they punch back. They have figured out how to close the deal. And it starts with Kevin Durant to me because he has matured into the leader of this basketball team. I loved it at the end how he gathered everybody around. He puts his arms around him. He, he can put his arms around like nine guys at, w at one time because they're so long. And he, he is now, the, he, he's become the big brother figure of this team where he's the older guy now. He's not the baby anymore. And he's acting like it. He is. And he's, he's acting I mean, like it. He's wow. always been a good guy. He's I mean, always been a chills. good guy. Seriously. He's always been yeah. a good guy, but right now it's like he's he's embraced. You see it during uh, press conferences. You has. see it during the games. He's embraced the leadership role, no question. Okay, now, the other huge change to your point about Russell Westbrook happened at my expense. The turning point of this whole playoffs happened after game three Spurs, my Spurs versus Thunder at Oklahoma City. Remember that Friday night? My Spurs went into that house of hysteria in Oklahoma City, my hometown, and my Spurs won the game 100 to 96, and they did it convincingly, mostly because Russell Westbrook shot himself in the foot. He took 31 shots and made only 10. Remember that night, Stephen A? Yeah. Remember right after the game? Russell Westbrook shocked me by stepping up and taking complete and full blame for what had just happened. And he all but vowed, won't happen again. I will get well, my teammates involved. Well, let me, let me finish this. Just, sure. just to that point, the most glaring stat right now in this series, these four games versus Golden State, Russell Westbrook has averaged 11.8 assists per game in these four. Steph Curry, meanwhile, has averaged 4.5 assists. Well, 11 to 4.5. It's almost, it's almost like 12 to 4.5. Wow. That's glaring. That's well, shocking. And he is getting everybody involved. Skip, the only reason I'm going to challenge that, I'm not going to hold that against Steph Curry because Steph Curry has gotten the ball to other people and they've been missing shots. The length and the physicality of Oklahoma City has been too much. Harrison Barnes has been virtually non-existent. I mean, I know he had four of his six shots yesterday, but key turnovers, lack of aggression. Andre Iguodala, the finals MVP, eight points in 33 minutes. You need more from him, and suddenly he can't find it. He hit two or four threes, but yeah. there just seems to be something missing. But, Skip, let me say this, man. We're talking about the players. I I I'm sorry. I mean, no, no disrespect. The coach of the year, I'm sorry, where is he? He's getting outcoached. Let's call it what it is. Because let me tell you something. Steve Kerr looks like he has no answers. Zero. No answers. Where was the defense? 42 points in the second quarter? 42 points? I mean, this is after you got ran out of the gym in the second quarter in game three. And Oklahoma City comes back and does the same thing to you uh, this time around. If it were not for Klay Thompson's explosion, which ain't about plays because this dude just made shots, 19 straight points. They might have lost by 40 again, okay? Where's the adjustments? What's happening? What, what can you do? I mean, I'm looking at Steve Kerr on the bench. No answers. No answers whatsoever. All right, Defensive. I got a question. Sure. Should he bench Steph Curry? Oh, absolutely not. Well, let's not. Uh, let's, let's not act like. Let's okay, not act but, like we're on drugs. Come okay, on now. You, but you here's my Steph here's Curry. my point. Steph Curry hasn't been very good in any of these games. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I understand that, but the point is, Steph Curry has no business sticking Russell Westbrook. Let's let's call this what it. I'm just tired. Of it. I'm just tired of it right now. There are dudes that are offensive players. 
Steph Curry doesn't even need to be in the same vicinity as Russell Westbrook defensively. Stay the hell away from him. He can't guard Steph Curry. He can't guard Russell Westbrook. Not in a million years. Russell Westbrook, and there's no insult to Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook is unguardable. Yeah. He cannot be guard by any human one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. It is impossible. I, it is I impossible. It. Now, I, I did see, Clay took him a good bit last night. They yes. would switch off. They would switch off, yeah. but what I'm saying to you is this. Steve Kerr was trying to hide uh, Curry. He had him on Robeson. Then what did Billy Donovan do? Robeson got the ball. He had him on Deion Waiters. What did, did, what did uh, Donovan do? Deion Waiters would try to do something. Everybody that Steph Curry is on, they are attacking him. And, and, and Steve Kerr can't seem to figure out what to do about it. Now, I don't know if there's anything to do about it, but I know if you're the coach of the year, and I know if you're, the, if you're Mr. Coach of the Year, even though you only coach, coach 39 games, and I know that if you're the guy that took over for Mark Jackson and was gift-wrapped a championship-caliber squad, I do expect more. I do expect more. Steve Kirk and coach. Nobody's up here disrespecting him. I like him a lot, and I think he does a, he's done a hell of a job. But in this particular series... I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Billy Donovan making a whole bunch of adjustments. I see none from Steve Kerr. Now, maybe he's tried it, and it's not working. But I see none. Let me be more accurate. I'm not saying he hasn't tried adjustments. I'm saying I see nothing that he has done that is working. This is bad. This is very, Stephen very bad. A, not to overly defend Steve Kerr, but Steph Curry, the unanimous MVP and back-to-back -back MVP, was 0 for 5 last night on uncontested three-point shots. Sure. He's shooting 37% from three in this series, which is way, way below. He, he's close to, as you know, close to a 50% three-point shooter. So what's happened in this series is Steph Curry has no longer been magic. He's looked more like a seventh pick in the draft I, I than not, he was. I did not mean to give the impression that it's Steve Kerr's fault and not Steph Curry's. Steph Curry is the two-time reigning league MVP. Steph Curry is big time. He is the greatest shooter that I've ever seen. He is being straight humbled right now by the greatness of Russell Westbrook, who has put the world on notice, this brother can't hang with me. Yep. Now, I don't believe that's true, but I'm saying based on what we have seen in this series thus far, Steph Curry is being called out by the game of Russell Westbrook because Russell Westbrook is going at him and saying, I'm on another level. You need to ask somebody. All I'm saying about Steve Kerr, however, is that while it's not primarily his fault, I can't help but notice what he's not doing because I'm one, I'm seeing what Billy Donovan is okay. doing. Billy Donovan isn't just it's not just about leaning on Durant and Westbrook. I got Billy it. Donovan is coaching. Okay, here, here's the point though. What lineup did all of our analytics experts rave about all year because it was invincible for Golden State? The death lineup, which has now been death to Golden State because Billy Donovan has said each time. Okay, I'll go small too. I'll play Ibaka but, at center, and they have crushed them with that lineup. But, small but, 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 to small. But, but but what I'm asking you to do, Skip, I'm not disagreeing with whatever you just said, with anything you just said. What I'm asking you to appreciate is the fact that Billy Donovan has been has had an answer for everything Steve Kerr has thrown at him. Steve Kerr hasn't had an answer for Billy Donovan. You didn't know they were longer. You didn't know they were more okay. physical. You didn't know that they were going to try to impose their will upon you. You didn't know that Russell Westbrook was this ruthless assassin okay. that was going to come at you with such relentlessness that it could potentially punk your whole squad. You okay. did not know this. Uh, you did you not sure know this. That there might not be any answer to what you're talking about. I understand. Maybe what you just said is too good. It's, it's And I guess what... And I guess what I'm saying to you is, well, then what you're saying to me is it wasn't coaching. It was the players. I'll buy that. See, and, and see, that so I'll give you that. that. So that's where we're going. Yeah. Because, again, okay. if, we can't, if we can't give Steve Blame. Kerr mm -hmm. some credit. culpability, I then agree. what the hell did he get all the credit for? You got it. All right, hold that thought. History certainly on Golden State side, but is the series over? We debate that next. Don't go anywhere. Just getting started.